And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer to the temple, coming to us straight from the world of role-playing and role-playing, works better in text than it does speaking it, and the and the man better known as the shitty D and D ideas guy, the and cur and currently creating the shitty not compendium, which we'll be getting into in a moment. Trying to see how many times I can work in shitty into the introduction. The one and only Sam Comerford. How are you doing today, oh, hello. man? Hello. I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm doing good. Um, for a lot of people, it's a meme to say winter is coming. Where I come from, it's not a meme. It is real life. Except it, except winter isn't coming anymore. It's here. Oh yeah, I I got gotcha. you. I live in Detroit, so it's uh, very much snowing right now. It wasn't snowing today. It snowed yesterday, but it's get but it's getting down there. Gotcha. Although I have I have heard that due to coal shortages, um, Santa is Santa's particular gift for naughty children is instead going to be Detroit Lions T-shirts. That is a very... That's worse than Cole. <laughs> very very much a sad gift. Oh. But I'd like to start... I'd like to start at the humble beginnings, in a sense. So with that in mind, walk me through your first introduction to role-playing games and what was it that made it stick? Well, I started playing role-playing games about six years ago. Uh, and it was my uncle who kind of brought me into the fold, as it were. And we played, uh, I think, uh, it might have been, I think it was Lost Minds of Phandelver. I think, pretty sure it was that module. And my character, the party, we, um, got into, like, this cave or something. And then somebody pulled a gem out of this cursed statue. Literally, rocks fell and we all died. Uh, so that was my first introduction to Dungeons and Dragons, was a TPK in the first session. Uh, and I've been pretty much hooked ever since. So I've been DMing five years now, uh, which I really enjoy. But yeah, that was pretty much my introduction. Mm -hmm. And were, were, you mo were you mostly a... Were you, did you mostly stick around with D&D &D or did you fiddle around with, uh, with other systems over the years? I mostly stick with D&D. &D. I have uh, some experience with, um, oh, what's the one that's like Fargo? It's uh, Fiasco. I've done Fiasco. I've done a little bit of um, some other stuff that my friend has asked us to play test. Uh, <clears throat> really, uh, I haven't done Pathfinder or Monster of the Week, which I've wanted to try, but uh, just some more niche stuff, I think. Uh, now, as I mentioned, as I hinted at earlier, one of the one of the, the big claims to fame for you is the shitty D and D ideas guy. Um, was were a lot of were a lot of those ideas things that ca things that came into practice at your table, or was it a case of just coming up with dumb ideas and seeing what ha seeing what was going to happen? They're not all dumb. They're all shitty though. Uh, I'll come up with ideas usually about five to fifteen every morning. Um, rarely have I ever used them at the table. They just come to me, and I just post them. Mm -hmm. Oh, and e even with now, when it comes to the other thing that you that you have to your fame is the role playing and role playing. Again, it's again, it's one of those things that's hard. It's hard to convey through voice. Um, role playing, role playing. You get yeah. used to it. Don't worry. Yeah, po podcast. Um. How did how did that how did that particular set of adventures get get um, started out? Well, uh, I essentially just uh, I was bored uh, during the pandemic, August of 2020, and I just asked my friends, "Hey, you want to start a Dungeons and Dragons podcast?" And they said, "Sure." So that's what we did, and then I made the Twitter account, and then kind of just went from there. Mm-hmm. And. 
I didn't. I couldn't help but I couldn't help but notice that when looking at say this, when looking at say the Sinner Saga, um, one of the one of the campaigns that you guys are doing, there's a whole lot of um, Wild West vibes. Is that a recur Is that a recurring thing for you? Uh, well, the Wild West vibes would be the setting of the second season, so it is, mm -hmm. it's, like, Weird West, I guess, is yeah. the template, I would say. Uh, but just for this season, I guess, that's the setting. I mean, the first one is just kind of a chaotic version of classic fantasy, but we tend to switch up the settings per season, I'd say. Mm-hmm. And... Now that that brings me to the shitty not compendium. First off, um, how how did the how did the name come about, and what makes it a not compendium? So, the shitty not compendium came about. I had been working on the shitty ideas for probably a few months at this point, mm -hmm. and somebody jokingly said that they should all be in a book, and I said, okay, yeah, sure, whatever. Uh, and eventually, I realized, like, hey. No, I should totally do that. That that could be a fun thing to do. And so that's what I did. I compiled them all into a book. And then I added some more stuff. I added a lot of like parts of like just creative process, ways that I can that I get inspired, ways that you can get inspired, how to craft characters and whatnot, questions you can ask yourself during that process of creativity. Uh, and I kind of just threw that all together. So that is essentially what the compendium is. So it's a shitty not compendium because it's the not is like a joke because it's like shitty can mean whatever I want, right? And the not kind of pertains to the shitty at yeah. the beginning. I will admit when I saw that title, one of the things I was reminded of is the unseries of joke of joke um expansions, joke joke blocks sets or what or whatever term you want to use this week for magic the gathering you know things like unhinged unglued that kind of thing uh i hate to say i'm unfamiliar i'll chalk it i'll chalk it up to a bit of coincidence but there's there's a series of, there's a series of magic sets that are in this un series that every single one of them is is would be completely ridiculous to be played uh in an actual game um a lot of a lot of them seem to find seem to be so seem to be solely the teams making fun of themselves, and a lot of them try are an attempt to try and figure out how many ways they can they can use the word ass in a card. Gotcha, gotcha. I mean, probably a lot, right? Well, one of the more tame ones is a artifact called a can of whoop ass. Gotcha, gotcha. Makes sense. Which tapping literally opens it. Because of course it does. Well, sure. You want to open a can of whoop ass on your enemies. Mm -hmm. So, as I understand, as I understand it, within the within the book, you're you're going to have a set of character ideas, spells, and and item ideas. And when it's because of the fact that it's written as ideas, would it be fair to me, fair of me to say that a lot of the ideas are um, suggestions that kind of get kind of get a proverbial ball rolling instead of instead of hard crunch oh yeah exactly that is essentially the whole idea behind the book uh i one of the things that i like to kind of i don't want to call it like a calling card but is a like a kind of piece of advertisement is that there are no stat blocks this is for you to use whatever you'd like for inspiration take it as you will uh, and a lot of these, like, especially the monsters and items, there's no challenge rating, there's no rarities for the items. Uh, and, I mean, some of them, I will say, probably pretty damn overpowered. But, I mean, that's up to you to change. You can change the monster entirely. You could just take, like, parts of it. You could take the monster as is, format it as, like, a CR30 god, whatever you want to do. That is up to you. This is a book of inspiration and how to find that inspiration. Mm-hmm. And... Give now there there is a bit there was a bit of in the in the class example with the paladin there was a bit of um you had, there was a bit of mentioning a kind of bias with it and because of the fact that you're covering all th you're covering all thirteen class all all thirteen core classes um I would like to get where your head's at regarding 
regarding each of the cl each of the classes since you mentioned a bit of paladin bias and just what your what your general feel is with e with each of the classes sure yeah i i mean the book is written to be comedic mm -hmm. so i'm i'm going to obviously put my own kind of spin on stuff but yeah i typically do main paladins uh paladin rogue and bard are typically what i love to play the most yeah. uh i guess going alphabetically uh artificer is fun i i have a, i don't really have a problem with it uh i really like barbarians bards i love uh clerics are okay i guess it kind of depends on the subclass for me clerics are um, one half of what i like to call cowzilla as as we call here call it here in the temple why is that claire um back in the back in the third edition days there was a there was a concept put forward called Godzilla i.e. cleric or druid the idea being that a a properly optimized cleric or druid could be an entire party all by himself gotcha and that can end up happening with clerics or warlocks in 5e all right i got gotcha. you mm -hmm. uh where is I? Cleric Druid? Yeah. I'm I'm fine with Druid. I I haven't really had any life changing experiences with them. I think they're cool mechanically. Uh fighters, I have a soft spot for fighters. I really do enjoy just the true versatility that comes with that class. Mm -hmm. Uh F what's next? Monk, mm -hmm. I think. Yep. Monk I've never really gotten into. I don't dislike the class. I do enjoy playing monks but it's just i don't i'm i'm much more of a one hit heavy hit person like you know paladin rogue uh versus a bunch of small hits so i i hate to insult monks in the temple but they're they're <laughs> probably not probably not in my top uh five mm -hmm. favorite classes i'd say yeah uh paladin i think i said mm-hmm uh rogue ranger i like ranger ranger i especially like because of these like a, some of the subclasses are just so cool like the gloom stalker is great fey wanderer a lot of the new ones have really kind of reshaped how the ranger is for me uh especially with the introduction of tasha's because that completely overhauled the class and now Which it's it needed because viable the, the, right the, it was like steaming garbage pile the vanilla <laughs> the vanilla ranger had possibly in my in my not so humble opinion the worst capstone feature of any class it was not good it at, was a bit of a mess at 20th level 20th level oh congratulations you reached 20th level now you can add now you can add your wisdom to attacks whoop t friggin do yeah really it's yeah i'm so glad they redid the class it, it's a lot more fun to play now ah uh, rogue i did i love rogues to death i've mm -hmm. played i think every subclass at this point uh our I man i'm just going alphabetically at this point mm -hmm. s sorcerer i like sorcerers i think they might be one of my least favorite spellcasters uh but they they could be a lot of fun especially when determining their backstory where they got their powers and whatnot is it a lineage is it like some item that's been giving them whatnot that i i really like the backstory capabilities as a sorcerers but as a class i think they're mechanically all right uh warlocks i do really enjoy i mean especially hexblade i mean come on that subclass is amazing oh yeah the uh, sword class Oh yeah. Well, you don't need to be an edge lord when you play Hexblade. You could have a fucking like snow scraper and be from Minnesota or something. Hey, I end did... the cold. <laughs> yeah, I, I just I, I um, one of the one of the tenets here here in the temple is we we hold these truths to be self evident that all men are cremated equal. I see. <laughs> uh and then wizard, uh. Wizard's tricky. I like wizard. I really do. Uh, but some of the subclasses are trash. Transmutation is so bad. It like it makes my skin crawl. I have no idea why anyone would ever play a transmutation wizard. But I mean, you take like a classic evocation. Divination wizards are just insanely good. War magic blade singers are 
Why did Blade Singers are crazy powerful, like just over the top good. I still hold a bit of a grudge that it, where I think that um, I think that Blade Singers should I think that Blade Singers should have um, should have been the, should have been their own class instead of shoehorned into Wizard because they don't. In my humble opinion, they don't fill the gish um, fantasy all that well. I, I'm. I'd say they should have been half casters. The ability for somebody to fly around with a twenty armor class casting wish. Like that's that is way too powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, like it's 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 too good. I know what I know why they did, it, and that's the reason. That's the reason why I say it's dumb. About as about as dumb as that psionics arcana that they did, where they got blown out. Oh yeah, that's right. The whole. Oh, oh, Psionic is just a wizard who casts spells with his mind. No. I will never let... That is that is two, that is that is one of two blunders from WotC that I will never let go. The other one being that that whole Samurais are just reskinned paladins. I, I really like the Samurai subclass. I really like it. I think they should have called it Knight as opposed to Samurai. Uh, but... I really, really like that subclass. I mean, you get a face build without even needing much charisma at all. You just need wisdom, which is great. Like when it comes to the subclass itself, that uh, I got no, pro I've got no problem with that. This was the the reskinning paladin thing that was that was in the DM that was in the original DM's guide, where it was talking uh... about other styles of fantasy, and what and for some reason thought and for some reason put. Set, put samurai and wuxia into the same category when they're not <laughs> gotcha gotcha oh and it's what it's one of those things that's been and the the idea of you of of making of making paladins into sit into samurai um is one of those things that i will i will continually roast um but to but get since we've gone into that i'll now there there are a few examples of shitty paladin ideas on the Kickstarter page, but I'd like to pick your brain as to as to what a few sh what a few shitty ideas um, would would be applicable for some of the other classes. We don't have to go through an exhaustive list. Just just throw just throw a few at me for each um, class. Well, I mean, now if I just gave you all my ideas for free, <laughs> there'd be no point in backing the Kickstarter. <laughs> but I'm I'm good with just making some up on the spot if you're down to riff with me. I can, yeah, I can do that. So, um, we'll start yeah, at can... the top with we'll start at the top with Artificer. Okay. Uh, you have a subclass in mind, or am I just going with this? Um, Let's go. Let's let's go with let's go with our let's just go with our as as a whole before we really do anything with subclasses. Okay. What about an artificer who can only build things out of Legos? Like that is their main casting component is just these little Lego building blocks. Obviously not copyright. Probably Mega Blocks if we're being honest. But like these little constructo blocks. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, since since you brought since you brought up subclasses, how about let's go let's go with um artillerist. There could be a artillerist artificer who has who's a centaur and their gun is mounted on their back and they're like this warforged centaur hybrid and they're just essentially this tank person. <laughs> All right, what um barbarian? You could have a and I and this probably isn't viable, but hey, it's shitty. A detective barbarian who while they're raging, it's not rage, it's focus. They're trying to pick out pieces of their environment with this intense gaze of focus. All right. Um Yeah, now since I mentioned since I mentioned a subclass, let's go um, let's go with Path of the Storm Herald, um, for a barbarian. All right, uh, you got a barbarian who was originally a part of a church to, uh, Tempest, but was kicked out for being too radical, and now uses the small amount of power they've been granted from 
the god of storms to when they rage. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, next. Um, next, I go. Next, I go with the class that can't seem to keep it in his pants, the bard. Ah, uh, what about a lore bard who? Spellcasting component is their yearbook from the class they graduated. <laughs> That's uh, and as far as uh, as far as colleges, as far as a car, as far as a um, bard college. Um, what about the what about the College of Swords? Uh, College of Swords. Hmm. You got a bard who claims they can use any implement. In a duel, be it plunger, be it stick, that is their claim to fame, and their performance stat is maxed. <laughs> all, all I can think of is the is the meme version of Moon Knight going, using my Marine Corps training, I can turn anything into a weapon, even this rifle. <laughs> Random bullshit, go. <laughs> oh. Oh, next would next of course would be cleric. Mm. Cleric is tricky without subclasses, you know, because you kind of need that baseline to know what you're going for with, um, because, I mean, you could just have an atheist cleric, which, I mean, do, do with that as you will. I don't know how that would work mechanically or what subclass you would use. Maybe knowledge uh, or arcana, but I guess that that could be, that's well, one for you. Since 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 the domain is so, is so important, I'll, let's, um. For the sake of it, let's go with the order domain. Order domain. I mean, order domain. You you kind of. I mean, you could go a couple ways with order domain. You could have a sheriff as an order cleric, kind of keeping the town as is, you know. Uh, or you could have a tax man as an order cleric, going from town to town, uh, or serving subpoenas to adventurers and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay, and that, so let's go. Let's go with the opposite end of thing. Let's go with the war domain. War domain cleric. Uh, it's a war domain cleric. They're just somebody who wanted to be a paladin, like their bigger brother, but they couldn't make an oath that was strong enough, so they have to pray to a god instead. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's a good. That'll be a good way to to make some cleric some some cleric main salty. Which which in that case, you're welcome. <laughs> oh. Next would be the Druid. Sorry, old habits because I because I had to I had to play through Mystery of the Druids a few years back. Oh. <laughs> but dru but um Druids. Druid. I mean Druid. You gotta go with something based on wild shape usually because I mean that's the pinnacle feature. So I mean you got a Druid. But they only can wild shape into stuffed animal versions of animals because that's all they've seen. They're just a kid. Mm -hmm. And as far as now, as far as potential druid circles, um, I think I think the I think the circle of what I think the circle of wildfire would be interesting. Uh, you got a druid, an Aarakocra druid, who has partially taken on this phoenix as like this familiar who has granted them these sort of wild powers but not in a warlock way it's not a pact it's like this this way of ensuring the defense and cleansing of the forest mm -hmm. so next w next would be the fighter who 20 years ago i nicknamed the feature Oh yeah, that's. I mean, you gotta build those feats. Mm -hmm. So since since it ends up getting used way too way too much in my, at my tables, um, let's go with the battlemaster fighter. Oh, uh, you got a dirty battlemaster fighter. They use uh, stuff that's been banned, like pocket sand and kick to the balls. <laughs> uh Okay, let's go a little more. Uh, let's get a, let's go a little more esoteric. Echo Knights. 
Echo Knights. Uh, you got somebody whose soul has been fragmented by the blade of a god after they challenged them to a duel. Uh, and this is their punishment. And their echo is not a direct copy of them, but instead a half of their personality. All right. Let's say that's a good way to have an argument with yourself and lose. Yeah, seriously. Oh. Just remember, it's the first sign of madness. Um, but when uh, next up, next up on that kind of, on that kind of thing would be monks, and I'd l keeping keeping with keeping with that vibe. I'd say one that's going to be easy to have a whole lot of fun with is the way of the drunken master. I mean, typically the classic way is just to go for a monk. With a high deception score, who kind of bumbles their way around, like, oh, ho, ho, here I am, mm -hmm. and then just kicking ass out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And that's all fine and good. That's that's how the subclass is intended to kind of be used. Uh, but with Drunken Master, what you could do instead is somebody who exclusively dances the robot. So people think their jerky motions aren't going to be too threatening, but suddenly, boom, they're fluid like water. Mm -hmm. And they could be a warforged for measure. I mean, yep. there you go. Um, uh I suppose an, another one to d another one to dick around with would be the way of the long death. Mmm, that is an interesting one. You got a um, monk janitor who works at a graveyard, uh, armed only with their rake, uh, which they use as a quarterstaff. Who has been studying the ways of death for a long time. And their predecessor was a long death monk, and their predecessor, and their monastery is just like the gatehouse for the mm -hmm. the graveyard. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna ask about way of four elements, but there's so many ways that way of four elements can go about that uh, that there's, there's there's a lot. Yeah, it's a it's way too wide of a net. Now I know you did the paladin list, but obviously that was just for paladin itself. So I'd like to go. I'd like to dip into a few oaths. Oh, sure. I'm not going to do Oath of Vengeance. You already have that on the cover. Oh, yeah. Um, so instead, let's go with Oath of the Ancients. You got a warforged paladin made entirely of wood whose armor is composed from the trees. They've been they've made an oath to protect the land that they were grown from. Mm -hmm. All right. Just for just for another one. Let's let's go with. Let's go with Oath of the Crown. You have a paladin who is the typical kind of head over heels king's guard, mm -hmm. except for the fact that they are guarding the rogue, who is the king's son, who does not want to be crowned. <laughs> they both they both hate each other. <laughs> um, and just just to just to throw the just to throw the opposite end of things. What about and. So, this is technically cheating because this was because this was in the DM's guide, but Oathbreaker. I you got a blackguard who doesn't want to admit it. So for your Oathbreaker, you've got somebody who broke their oath in the most petty way possible, but whoever or whatever they made their oath to is super vindictive about it. Like they they're like they've they've pledged like it's have you you've seen Scott Pilgrim right yeah. where the guy is. He's vegan, but he eats, like, meat three times, and they just incinerate him. Like, I'm picturing something like that. Like, so surface level. Uh, that, like, a pe like a petty oathbreaker who is now angry at the people who have, like, kicked them out for some wrong reason. Mm-hmm. Um. Now, next would be the ranger. Mm. And... The... It would be it would be tempting to go with something like go go with something like Beastmaster, but instead I instead I want I want to I'd want I'd want to ask about say Horizon Walker. You have a uh, let's do Asimar Ranger mm -hmm. Horizon Walker who's trying to search for a portal back to heaven as they're actually an angel that's been imprisoned within a mortal body. Mm-hmm. I can certainly go with that. Now, when it comes to when it comes to rogue, um, 
I'd say, I'd say, what about, say, the Phantom? I don't think I've ever done one for the Phantom. So is that, that that's the one where they talk, is that one where they talk to the dead? Is that correct? Yeah. I mean, the very obvious one is just the kid who listens to, like, Marilyn Manson or something who hangs out at the graveyard <laughs> pretending to be super edgy and taking all these photo shoots actually gets in contact with the dead uh, and is now just rolling with it because they think it's the coolest shit ever. Mm-hmm. Oh. To, you, to use something a little, a little more sane... Um, to use something a little more sane... And a little less edgy. What about the mastermind? You've got a rogue mastermind who has essentially set up these franchisee adventuring parties so that they don't have to do any work anymore and they just send other chumps to go die for them. That's, that, sound, that sounds about right. Um, now, when it comes to Sorcerer, there's a whole lot of origins that can be that can be messed around with, um, just for just for the sake just for the sake of craziness. Um, let's go with let's go with um, divine soul. You've got a sorcerer who was struck by an angel that fell from heaven, uh, and some of their blood accidentally bled into this poor unfortunate soul and when they woke up they had divine powers mm -hmm. gifted to them by the dying angel uh, um to go the opposite end end of the route when it comes to crazy ideas wild magic you've got a guy his name's todd todd is your the most average and unlucky person on the planet and the gods thought it would be funny to give him the most chaotic power imaginable <laughs> i can go with that that's that sounds like rincewind no idea what that is. Um, Rincewind is from Discworld. Oh, and gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. The jo the joke about him is that he is that he's a wizard who doesn't want, who can't use magic because he has one extremely dangerous spell that no other spell wants to share headspace with. A pretty good joke, actually. <laughs> oh. Now when it come now. When it comes to war when it comes to warlock, um, I don't want to I don't want to go with the with the hex blade because that because that's going to be a little too obvious. So instead, the instead I'll go with say um, the fathomless. Fathomless. Uh, you've got a sailor who drowned. They're a reborn patron of this being this watery being that after it dragged them to the depths it found out that this person loved the sea more than they loved the land and decided to give this person new life and power if they exacted their will upon the land itself mm -hmm. and just to go just to go a little bit this might be a bit of a, a wide one but the genie You got somebody who thinks they're trying to become a Hexblade Warlock. They find what looks to be a sword. It's actually not. It's a container. A genie comes out. Boom, they've been tricked. They're a different Warlock now. And... It's, now, lastly, when it comes to when it comes to Wizard, I'm not going to pick one that's, ju that's just a... That's just one of the... One of... One of one of the pet, one of the spheres, because that's way that's way too easy. Um, that and I'm, that and I was never a fan of the of individual sphere individual um magic spheres being subclasses. Gotcha. Oh. Um, so in so instead, let's instead let's go with graviturgy. I actually posted uh, one about Graviturgy Wizard yesterday. Uh, I guess the premise of that one was that it's just a Graviturgy Wizard who's discovered that the inside of the 
uh, planet or whatever that they're living on uh, is set to collapse soon and become a black hole. So they're trying to reverse that kind of gravitational process. Mm-hmm. Um, I suppose another example of of a of a bigger bookworm than me would be Order of the Scribes. Hmm. So you got Order of the Scribes, who didn't intend to become a wizard. They kind of just found the sentient comic book that said, hey, you could learn some cool spells. Uh, and so they did. Mm-hmm. So that's that's the Order of the Scribes right there. All right. Oh. And lastly, War Magic. Um, You've got a bladesinger who doesn't like to hold swords because they get that ring whenever they hit it against something, so they decided to just dip into full war magic instead. Mm-hmm. Now, I'd say I'd say that covers a de- I'd say that covers a decent bit of ideas. Now, when it comes to when it comes to um shitty item ideas, um, I'd I'd venture that a lot of these a lot of these are in the magic item end of things. Um, yes. And there, it sounds it sounds like so, it sounds like some of them might be overpowered. I wouldn't say all of them. In <laughs> fact, I'd say a lot of these are purposefully very useless for the sake of a pun. But they kind of they kind of just get the brain going. Like I mean, just pick an object in your house. Uh, I don't know. I see a thing of rope right now. Uh, what rhymes with rope? Pope, I guess. Pope rope. It, this this holy cord acts as a plus one spell focus, and you can use it to bind things uh, in a certain way, and they need to make a grappling check. Whatever. It's stuff like that. Well, to use to use that to use that as an ex- to use that kind of thing as a la- as a launching point. Um, what sort of, what sort of magic item would you create from say a whiteboard? Or or just a ch- or just a portable chalkboard, a portable chalkboard. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh you've got the. Ooh, okay. You've got the chalkboard of folding, which acts as a wizard spell book. And what it does is that you can fold this chalkboard out until it's a full classroom sized chalkboard, and you can teach the party all one spell that they can cast using your spellcasting ability because you've taught them how to cast the spell in a classroom setting. Mm-hmm. Nice little, nice little parallel for the or for the um scri- for the scribe idea you mentioned earlier. Oh, that's um, true. Oh, all right. So for, I'd say an, I'd say another, another another crazy one that we could that we could go with, um. Let's just let's just go with the thing that's mightier than the sword. Let's go with a, let's go with a pen. Ah, the pen. So for the pen, I guess we could uh, we could go with the fountain pen. Uh, and with that, you might be thinking, "Oh, it's just a pen." No, this is a fountain pen. You can literally just cast. Uh, create water from the tip of this pen in this cone because it's a fountain pen. It just shoots water out. Mm-hmm. Um, in the in that same in that same vein, um, if some if someone if some if someone if someone said that they they wanted to they wanted to be a caster who who. Who's who's focused just on casting magic missile as often as possible? What what equivalent would you come up with when it comes to a shitty item idea? Gun. <laughs> probably probably gun. <laughs> it sh- shoots bullets. Shoot shoots shoots bullets that never miss. Yeah yeah, heat seeking gun, magic never missile. Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> um. I remember someone on on the Unearthed Arcana subreddit had come up with the um the scroll of suppressing fire which had 200 charges of gu- of guiding bolt. Oh my god. <laughs> and Whoa. you could you could you could expend more charges to up its level or you could expend 10 charges to have guiding bolt af- affect a a, tw- a um 20 feet by 20 feet area. I mean that had to be a legendary item, right? I mean, two was it two hundred charges? You said. Yeah, and it was not a legendary item. 
How? <laughs> what? I mean, if you just scale that from spell scrolls alone, that's technically like a level 200 item. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah, it's also it's also that's also 22 shots of of ninth level guiding bolt, which guiding bolt is are is already ridiculous at first level as it is. Did I mention that this does this does guiding bolt at a plus five modifier? Why? <laughs> What's the point anymore? <laughs> it's the well. To be fair, it is the scroll of suppressing fire. <laughs> I suppose it's suppressing fire if you're suppressing a tarask. Like <laughs> what? Oh, uh, but you, but to go to um to go with a, to go with a to go with a old classic. How would you ta how would you take the idea of? The 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 classic with the classic wizard pulling things out of his the classic illusionist pulling things out of his hat, and turn that into a shitty idea. Well, there's a few ways you can go with that. You could have a conjuration wizard who just pulls small animals out of their hat. You could have an arcane trickster rogue with the find familiar spell mm -hmm. who pulls things out of their hat and then asks people for their money. Uh you could you could have a um. I mean, they wouldn't ask for money. They would use their invisible mage hand, as is the subclasses thing, mm -hmm. uh, which is asking uh, subtly, should we say? Uh, you could also just have the like. You could just have what's that? I mean, it already exists. What's the? Uh, it's like the bag of uh... yeah, the bag of holding. Um... No, 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 not bag of holding. It's got these little like the puff balls in it that turn into monsters when you throw it out. You could just reflavor that as a hat. Mm -hmm. Oh. Incid incidentally, be very careful when you give a portable hole and a bag of holding to an engineer player. Oh yeah, we don't want black hole arrows. No, thank you. <laughs> I only let that thing happen once, and I said never again. Now, yeah. When it comes to the, when it comes to the idea of shitty monsters, um, obvious obviously keeping theme is impo is important but um with the, with those is it is it also is it still just a list of of crazy ideas oh of course keeping in theme of the book and i mean some of them are pun based like the goose moose which is on the cover mm -hmm. of the book which is i would claim both funny and scary at the same time if you've seen both a goose and a moose in real life yes i have very scary uh but then i mean obviously you have some just generally funny ones along the lines of puns and then i do have some ones that are genuine monsters mm -hmm. that i've thrown in there to keep people on their toes yeah oh but just just to pick your brain on that kind of thing how would you take say a bullet and tur and turn that into a shitty idea well, the bullet, of course, is accompanied by the much larger monster called the gun, which <laughs> launches them across the battlefield at unheard of speeds. Which is saying something, because bullets are big guys. They're huge, yeah. <laughs> Just land sharks. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and given the fact that, that I had a druid who used, this at, who used this as their pet, how would you do a shitty displacer beast? Uh, well, you have, inside of the Displacer Beast, you have the Replacer Beast. So whenever a familiar dies or a party member dies, uh, the Replacer Beast will appear for a little while until you can find somebody to replace that party member or NPC that's died, and they're played by the DM, and they look like a Displacer Beast, except, uh, they have a fun little British accent. <laughs> I suppose... And give, given that there's given that there's always room for it, how would you shitty up a gelatinous cube? Oh, I mean, you could you could go the funny route and just be like, it's just a gelatinous cube made of like guacamole or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, or you could go more serious, where it's like the congealed blood of a god that died long ago, and now it does extra radiant damage to anything that touches it and sears. Mm -hmm back anything in the dungeon as it glows with a faint hope that people could see around the corner 
Mm-hmm. Now, when it comes... Now, when it comes to the... When it com I suppose the, the last one that I'd like... The last one that I'd like to go with on in this regard... For a lot of people, the b the big bad to make shitty would be it would be a dragon, but that's too obvious. So instead, how would you make a beholder shitty? So a, a shitty beholder, big bad evil guy, would be a beholder that's been having nightmares. And beholders, when they when they dream or have nightmares or whatever, their dreams manifest into reality. So when this beholder is having nightmares. Not the beholder that's necessarily the bad guy. It's the people who are controlling their dreams, therefore generating this endless supply of whatever they want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's there's a good there's a good bit of we of weirdness normally reserved for Numenera. Um, now what what are you shooting for as far as a page count for the shitty not compendium? Oh, we're going anywhere from around probably fifty to a little over seventy pages. Mm -hmm. I'd say. And I did I did see that one of the stretch goals was what re what you refer to as a um shitty char shitty character sheet. Um mm -hmm. I am a bit cu and since th since that stretch goal has been met, I'm a bit curious what a shitty character sheet is going to entail. Just a character sheet at the back of the book or something else. Yeah. It'll be a character sheet at the back of the book as is traditional and Dungeons and Dragons, but it's not going to be your traditional character sheet, of course. I mean, you're going to have AC and stuff like that, but as opposed to like crates, flaws, you're going to have favorite flavor of ice cream, uh, d likes to listen to jazz, yes or no, uh, like very niche things that would be used in like an icebreaker. It's just going to be a very comedic take on a character sheet. Mm -hmm. Oh. And I'll cer I'll certainly be I'll certainly be looking forward to that, I, especially since there especially since I'd be interested in how you take what how you transform say inspiration into that onto that sheet. Inspiration, my guy. Shitspiration. <laughs> A little bit on the nose, but I'll take it. Uh, but with all that with all that said, I would like to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way to all the way here to enjoy the madness at play here which i think is just par for the course for you oh yeah you bet uh, yeah <clears throat> and uh go ahead. go ahead sorry and anytime you see fit to return to the temple the door is always open as i often say around here drinking is not mandatory but it is encouraged i gotcha <laughs> yeah thank you for having me and of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>